Hey there, Alphonse here, and coming up next, we're going to do some seismic and physics analysis of the collapse of the World Trade Center towers. And my name's Alphonse of the Veterans for 9-11 Truth. This is one of the reasons why most of us don't believe uh, the official government story. And uh, we're going to look at charts, and we're going to look at graphs. We're going to look at Richter scales and uh, all sorts of things like that. Seismic records are uh, courtesy of Columbia University Geology Department. We'll look at thing, things like signal duration. Yeah, in the case of the second collapse, the signal, the seismic signal, only lasted for eight seconds. And the collapse had to last for at least ten seconds. Here we created a uh, hypothetical top 15 floors. We're going to drop that top 15 floors right on the ground and see what kind of uh, earthquake it'll create. Theoretically, we're going to do it. We're not going to actually do it. And uh, it's going to be going through a medium with a density of 0 0.07 pounds per cubic foot. And that's the average density of the atmosphere. And the top 15 floors on the right, uh, we're going to drop it through a medium that is 6 pounds per cubic foot average density, which is the World Trade Center tower that would normally be underneath it. Uh, so what do you think is going to hit the ground first? The one that's going through the medium with a density of 0 0.07 pounds per cubic foot, or the one that's going through uh, the World Trade Center towers, which has a 6 pounds per cubic foot average density? I'm going to put my money on the one going through the thinner medium. You can test this uh, theory out. Just take your fist and thrust it through the atmosphere right out in front of you and then go to your wall and thrust your fist at the wall and see which one's more difficult to travel through. And you'll find out real quick that it's easy to go through air and it's not easy to go through the wall, especially if you happen to, happen to catch a stud. Uh, but don't try that at home, folks, unless you've got some good boxing gloves on. Uh, or, you know, you know what you're doing. You know, there's some karate people that might be able to do that without hurting themselves. Uh, seismographic evidence, care of, uh, okay, we're going to talk about the Richter scale. It's uh, an exponential base 10 logarithmic, logarithmic scale. You see down here on the bottom left, you've got uh, 10 to the to the power of 1 equals 10. 10 to the power of 2 equals 100. And you'll notice all you have to do to figure the steps on this exponential base 10 scale is to add a 0 every time you hit a, a whole number. Yeah, so it's easy. Now look at the 10 to the uh, 2.1 power. Now that, that means the first collapse on the Richter scale was a 1, 2, 5, 8, 9. And the second collapse was a 1, 9, 9, 5, 2. Now that first collapse, the 2.1, is only 62% of a 2.3. Why such a big difference when the towers were twins? Twin towers equals twin earthquakes? Nope, didn't happen that way. Not even close. See, now there's a, a, a bar graph that shows the first collapse, the second collapse, and the collapse of WTC7. But what we're going to do with that uh, hypothetical top 15 floors is we're going to calculate how much force and impact there would be and what kind of a uh, earthquake that would create. And we've... Uh, we're using one fifteenth of the mass of the towers, which is probably a little heavier than what it really is because those towers tapered as they went up, at least inside they did, because you don't need as much beef on the top as you do on the bottom because you're not carrying as big a load on top as the bottom. Yep. So you can see here we've got the, the, jewel, the jewels and all the different, the Newtons and... One of the key factors here is how hard is the ground that you're dropping the thing on. And we're dropping it uh, on ground that is in uh, Manhattan Island. 
And that ground is as hard as it gets. And we're getting our information about the hardness of the ground from uh, Stony Brook State University of New York, Department of Geosciences. And I can tell by looking here that they uh, are PhDs. And uh, when they talk about things like uh, not just igneous and metamorphic, but uh, meadow, metamorphic igneous. Yep. So that's what we're going to do is drop that uh, 15 floors down on the ground on Manhattan Island and see what happens. But it would um, <clears throat> generate the equivalent of, uh, on the Richter scale, a 4.0730 on the Richter scale. And the equivalent yield would be uh, whole b several tons of TNT. Now the formula is basically one half mass times velocity squared. So what's missing here? Must be something missing. Either the mass or the velocity of the World Trade Center towers must have been missing. Well, we've uh, calculated the velocity, and we know uh, that that antenna there. On, that was on top of the building, moved 134 feet in 2.5 seconds. 134 feet in 2.5 seconds, which is actually faster than free fall. Those are just the calculations, and I did it based upon, I got the distance based upon a known distance, which is the 200 feet across the World Trade Center towers. See, something falling in a vacuum would travel 100 feet in 2.5 seconds. That antenna traveled 134 feet, somewhere in that vicinity. So we can see and measure the time it took for the antenna to move 134 feet with pretty good precision. We can conclude with great confidence that the WTC tower is falling with at least no resistance, and in fact may be being pulled down by something. So... We can say with great certainty it wasn't the velocity that was missing. It was the mass. Where'd the mass go? The mass of the building. Well, we'll take a look here and we can see that uh, it is just going out. And we're going to play this in slow motion. Did you see that flash there? That's a squib. There's squib flashes all over the place. I'll play it again in super, super slow-mo here so you can see all the nice fireworks going off. Here, now watch. It's, it's going to be in super slow motion, and you can see that the top of the building, the top 15 floors or so, there's a squib. Look at them all. Watch them all. Man. The top 15 floors are, are not falling down. They're falling over. So how does that pancake the building? There's another one. There's another one, another one, another one. I mean, these uh, flashes are just all over the place, like Christmas tree lights. Pow, 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 pow. Now, see, that, uh, the top of that building did not fall down on the rest of the building. But see, this is how I get uh, my... This is how I get my kicks, is watching uh, buildings blow up on super slow-mo. Yeah, it's part of the investigation. See, and these clouds expanded at about uh, 200 feet per second. You know, they don't call them laws of physics for nothing. The laws of physics have never been shown to be wrong, not once. You know, the sun always comes up. Yeah. 90% of the building's mass was diminished in less than 10 seconds. And that's 10 times more energy than was available. Where did the extra energy come from, folks? Well, you saw those little squibs there. Yeah. Check out our website, v911t.org. We've got 9-11 and other conspiracy DVDs for a dollar delivered. Alphonse signing off for now. Thanks for listening.